That was the verdict yesterday night, of course, the Senator Speaker delivering it after Senators decided to uphold the Meadow County Assembly impeachment motion that was brought before the House for a third time despite the five attempts that have been made against now the ousted Meadow Governor, that is Kawera Mwangaza. And now we are about to look at the impact or the rather the aftermath following the impeachment of the first female governor from office. You do remember there were seven governors in office right now. There are only six remaining, but what recourse can she she take after the Senate decided to impeach her. Now the votes that tallied that in the first charge, some of 26 senators voted to uphold the first charge of a gross violation. Some 14 senators abstained while four voted in her favor. On the second charge on gross misconduct, 26 senators voted in favor of her impeachment while 14 others abstained. In the third charge, 27 senators upheld the charge of abuse of office. Uh, one voted against it and 14 abstained. Now some of the abstain uh, ab uh, abstained votes came uh, from opposition or from the opposition party, which includes uh, the ODM party, Wiper, and the various other parties within the Azimio coalition who currently have a representation within the Senate. That was the fate of Kawera Mwangaza. Of course, so keeping an eye on what is happening in Meru County and how the news is reverberating across the country as well. Welcome to News Check. My name is Abdi Aziz Hashim. The sign language interpreter at the bottom end of the screen is Susan Thuku. So let's get down to the conversation. What next for Kawera Mwangaza following the impeachment? And joining us to make sense of what even happened yesterday night, given that we woke up to this particular news, is none other than Naftali Nyamogo, a certified professional mediator. Thank you for joining us, Naftali. Thank you very much. Let's start on that notion. What did you make of the proceedings when you heard the Senate Speaker delivering the judgment? Okay, number one, mm -hmm. it is uh, capable of being treated as fact uh, that uh, uh, Kawira Mwangaza now has lost her seat as the governor of, of, uh, of Meru. Meru is uh, County 12, according to the first schedule, mm -hmm. uh, which divides the territory of Kenya into the counties. Now, when you look at the speaker uh, giving that uh, verdict, the speaker of the, the Senate, then what comes into your mind is that uh, the, the Senate of the Republic of Kenya has uh, that uh, uh, power or right to interpret mm -hmm. and apply the law as far as counties are concerned. And in this regard now, uh, to the removal of uh, uh, the governor from office, it is only the Senate which has that apex uh, authority to make that uh, verdict. Uh, from the three counts, gross violation of the constitution yes. and the law, then uh, gross misconduct and then abuse of office. Mm -hmm. The reason why the framers of the constitution envisaged the word gross. Gross means, according to the uh, Oxford Dictionary, uh, visible to the naked eyes. Those violations which were visible to the naked mm -hmm. eyes. Then uh, 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 conspicuously or outrageously mm -hmm. bad or reprehensible that can be seen from the governor for this period of time mm -hmm. uh, bearing in mind that this is the first impeachment of of, of a governor mm -hmm. since the 9th august 2022 general elections yes now the people of meru county i'm 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 i'm, I'm, I'm appealing mm -hmm. i'm calling uh, upon the people of meru county in this application mm -hmm. uh, not to be agitated yes uh, not uh, to lose their self-possession, mm -hmm. just to remain calm, to have that steadiness of mind under stress. Mm -hmm. Because this is what the law says, yes. that if there is an abuse of office yes. from a state officer, mm -hmm. if there is a gross violation from a state officer, then uh, the, the county assembly has that prerogative to impeach the governor, and then the process will take its course the way now Kawira Mwangaza has been taken through. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, Article 23 of the Constitution, yes. uh, the, 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 the authority of the courts to uphold or enforce the, the Bill of Rights mm. is that now Kawira also has that chance or opportunity yes. to appeal 
to the judiciary mm -hmm. in, in order to be heard. Because the High Court has jurisdiction in accordance with Article 165 to hear and determine application of redress of mm -hmm. any denial, violation, or infringement of or a threat to a right or a fundamental freedom mm -hmm. in the Bill of Rights. So these are rights and the fundamental freedoms that the people of uh, Kenya have been given, both the public officers and also the common one. So Kawira from here will move to court, and then the court will give also what? Uh, it's determination. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's about a fair hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the MCS have done their part. Uh, the prosecution side and the defense side have done their part. What we, we are looking for is that uh, uh, from the layman, from the layman perspective, yes. what is the Meru guys uh, speaking about? Mm -hmm. Was this uh, 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 legit? Was it legal? Was it uh, unfounded? Mm -hmm. Was it called for? Is it right for their governor to be? Impeached. Mm -hmm. When you look at the submissions yesterday, both from the MCS and uh, the, uh, the the prosecution county. side, mm -hmm. and also from the people from the ground, mm -hmm. one major issue that was raised was that uh, the killing of the sniper. Yes, and uh, the office of the governor was every linked. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, responsibilities of leadership. Uh, it, it was morally bad in the principle or in the practice that the, the office of the governor was involved in the killing of, of Sniper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the death about Sniper uh, in Meru was met by strong resent resentment mm -hmm. and cynicism. Mm -hmm. uh, pe people were, it, it, it was difficult uh, for the people to bear that that young man went through what he, wa he went through. And this was the reason why mm -hmm. uh, 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 the people saw that the counter assembly ought to impeach the governor because of, 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 of depriving the right to a life of a Kenyan mm -hmm. who was doing their work to earn a living. Mm -hmm. So when you look at these uh, three counts, from where I sit, uh, the defense side tried to counter the prosecution, mm -hmm. but they were defeated. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the third time mm -hmm. that the governor is presented before the Senate. Before the Senate. Yes, and Naftali, given that you have brought up the, uh, the demise of uh, Sniper himself, even the uh, senator, that is Moses Kajang, was saying that both the county executive and the county assembly uh, did something wrong because they were dancing on the dra uh, the grave of a sniper just to make a case before the Senate. So was it even wise on part of the county assembly and the county executive to base their case off somebody who has already died? Yeah, do you do you know why? Mm -hmm. We we have uh, the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The Bill of Rights is like the heart of the Constitution. Right to life. When an individual dies arbitrarily without a just cause. You cannot say that people are, are, are making a joke out of the grave Be, because that right was denied and it, it is inalienable. According to the framers of the Constitution, the right to life of Abudi or Naftali mm -hmm. is inalienable. It means it, 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 it is incapable of being rebuted mm -hmm. or transferred to another. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is not subject to forfeiture. So if a person dies, People must question, how did they die? Mm. Because, because a person shall not be deprived of life uh, 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 intentionally, mm -hmm. except to the extent authorized by this constitution or another law. Mm -hmm. There the are, uh, are places where the constitution has uh, offered uh, limitations of rights to, to, to life. Mm -hmm. But now, in the case of Sniper, the MCS and the people there wanted to 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 to, uh, to speak mm -hmm. heavily mm -hmm. to communicate a, a, a message that this death was not normal mm -hmm. yeah this death was not usual we wanted to know what happened and you saw the submissions mm -hmm. people were crying and they knew you know 
the the difference between the ordinary monainji mm -hmm. and uh, the state organs like now the DCI is that the ordinary monainji can know the truth yes barely it is visible it, it is clearly to the minds of many people that this death followed the, the, this course mm -hmm. but now the DCIO and other organs mm -hmm. may try to hide some information okay. so because of the sovereignty of the people mm -hmm. you know uh, the counties came because of that aspect of self-determination mm -hmm. that the people of Meru County have sovereignty yes. that uh, they cannot be controlled by outside forces so they were affirming that we know how sniper was killed. Okay. So tell us the truth mm -hmm. as a state organs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Naftali, we have not been here for the first time. Uh, we have seen the former Embo governor, that is Martin Wambora, who went to the Supreme Court. Uh, the then Chief Justice uh, David Maraga reinstated him as the governor. So what scenarios are we likely to see to play out in the corridors of justice if and when the governor, the impeached governor, that is uh, Kawera Mwangaza, goes to the court? Right. Now, the highest uh, court is the Supreme Court yes. in Kenya. So if uh, Kagura Mwangaza finds herself in the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. then there are two options. The Supreme Court may uphold mm -hmm. the impeachment or uh, refute the impeachment. Mm -hmm. So they may declare her the governor or uphold her impeachment. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what we call independence of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. They have that jurisdiction. The judiciary, through now the Supreme Court, the judges have that jurisdiction, the right and the power to interpret and apply the law. So let us wait and see. Mm -hmm. what will happen in the, in the, in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it is a matter of wait and see. Uh, but going back to the conversation of Tali, we are talking about a governor who was independent at first before joining the ruling coalition. What message does it send to some of the independent candidates who are even seeking to be governors uh, in the devolved units? You know, the, the Constitution is very explicit on independent candidates. Mm -hmm. And the reason why independent countries came into being mm -hmm. was that uh, the citizens could feel infringed by some of our, our political parties. Mm -hmm. So in one way or the other, because of that right to political rights or freedom uh, to vote and, and, and buy, they introduced that clause for independent countries. Mm -hmm. But it is high time that the people of Kenya sit down and uh, discuss to look into on the aspect of independent candidates Be because from where i sit we should not be having independent candidates on uh, presidential mm -hmm. and the gubernatorial posts because imagine today abdi a president has won on an independent candidate mm -hmm. without members from a political party, mm -hmm. how can they govern the country? Mm -hmm. That is but what Kibaki now we have seen. It. Back, in the, back in the day, Kibaki had only a few legislators representing him in the court. But of uh, Kibaki was uh, never an independent House. candidate. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are speaking about independent, independent. candidates. Okay. Because when you are elected as an independent candidate, then mm -hmm. you win as an, uh, an independent what? Uh, 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 officer. Mm -hmm. Now, you are at the mercy to seek sympathy from mm -hmm. other political parties mm -hmm. to back your government. Mm -hmm. So from where I sit, because we have two levels of government, it, mm -hmm. it is my opi opinion. The law says that we have independent candidates uh, in the presidential and the gubernatorial. Mm -hmm. But since these are governments which are distinct and interdependent mm -hmm. that need uh, that gusto or zest mm -hmm. to govern, a candidate should not be elected as an independent mm -hmm. in, in the gubernatorial mm -hmm. and presidential because they will have hard time. You need political parties because the Republic of Kenya under Article 4, mm -hmm. the Republic of Kenya shall be founded on a multi-party democratic state, mm -hmm. founded on the national values and the principles of governance referred to in Article 10. So when you elect a leader as an independent party, then you jeopardize them through their good governors. They cannot govern because uh, 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 the, the, the counter assemblies yes. may belong to other parties and you are independent. Mm -hmm. This is what has happened now in Meru. Mm -hmm. 
That is why we have had three impeachments. Mm. Yeah. Yes, because when the governor was defending herself, she was saying that in the first impeachment, she had only the support of one MCA. Mm -hmm. In the second impeachment, she had at least nine. And in this third, the latest one that she has been impeached now fully, she had at least the support of over 20 MCAs. And she even opined if she would not have been impeached, she, next time the impeachment motion was brought back to the Senate, she would at least had over 40 support of MCAs. But that is another matter. Now, um, to, to the Kenyans who are watching us right now, Naftali, if somebody is impeached, what does that mean for their political career and as a person, professionally? Now, impeachment mm -hmm. was put or provided for in the Constitution mm -hmm. as a political process. It's purely a political process. Mm -hmm. It is one way uh, to remove a public officer or a state officer. Mm -hmm. It is what the people of Kenya decided. It is we who decided to have that process of impeachment. Mm -hmm. So if someone has been impeached and then they don't go to court mm -hmm. to either uh, uh, defend these allegations, yes. then it means from that, be, because one of, uh, uh, one of the organs of the government is the legislature. Legislature, it means that the legislative authority of the republic is derived from the people mm -hmm. and at the national level is mm -hmm. vested in and exercised by parliament. Yeah. So if parliament then determines that a, a public officer or a state officer has been impeached on the grounds of gross violation of the constitution mm -hmm. or, or another law, uh, uh, abuse of office or gross misconduct, then it means this public officers lacked what? Integrity. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that unbroken or un un undivided completeness. Mm -hmm. we, we want moral admirableness in our state offices. And we have put the uh, institutions there to oversight these state officers. So one of the institutions is parliament. Mm -hmm. now, now the Senate. If the Senate determines that the Kawira Mwangaza was unfit to hold office, mm -hmm. then it, it remains like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's an indictment. You cannot hold any other position. You can't hold any other mm -hmm. Indeed. Any other um, Naftali, you've even heard some of the conversations that has been rife within the uh, Meru County Assembly as well as in the country in terms of dissolving a, uh, uh, the County Assembly uh, of Meru County. So what do you make of the conversation first and what are the legal procedures required to dissolve a County Assembly? Now, the constitution also provides for dissolution of what? Mm -hmm. A county unit. Mm -hmm. uh, the members of, uh, once if a county assembly is dissolved, mm -hmm. then the president uh, puts in place a caretaker mm -hmm. unit to govern that. Mm -hmm. So it means then for that period of time, the people will be contemplating to go back to elect a new leadership from the governor to the MCS. Mm -hmm. What has happened now cannot be said uh, to, uh, to provoke what? Dissolution of, of, of the county. Mm -hmm. What has happened now? If the governor is impeached and, and, uh, and then the, the, the apex court now, which is the Supreme Court, upholds this impeachment, mm -hmm. it means then the deputy governor, according to the procedures, yeah. procedurally, the deputy governor now assumes office mm -hmm. as governor, mm -hmm. not dissolution. The dissolution is another pro process. Mm -hmm. The process which now we see, mm -hmm. we are seeing now the deputy governor mm -hmm. coming in as governor of the county government of Meru. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And indeed, given that the, those conversations have been rife within the county, um, back in the day we even saw uh, the former Makweni governor, that is Kivuda Kibwana, attempting to dissolve uh, the county assembly of uh, Makweni back then. And of course, we want to engage with our very own Gibson Gisore, who's just joining us, a constitutional lawyer. As we set you up, Gisore, let me go back uh, to Naftali. Naftali, we're talking about um, the lessons now that can be drawn from uh, this impeachment motion, especially for first some governors um, who have been office, what lessons can these governors especially draw from the impeachment? Uh, number one le lesson is, is that we have responsibility of le leadership. Mm -hmm. If you have been elected as governor or another leader, 
there is that social force that binds a state officer or a public officer for the causes demanded by that force. Mm -hmm. And this has been given by the people of Kenya, that responsibility. You have to account. You have to be liable for your actions. Mm -hmm. And I have mentioned here that one of the actions which uh, made the county assembly to impeach the governor, mm -hmm. it, it is because of that public outcry of Snipe, the death of Sniper. Mm -hmm. And I have told you how the right to life is very fundamental. It's very basic as a bill of rights. Mm -hmm. There is no way a Kenyan can disappear. And then the office of the governor has, is linked. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an, uh, an example. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, we, we are in our social WhatsApp uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, our area MP, uh, Jafet Mukaya, mm -hmm. In, 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 because my brother Otachi Otachi mm -hmm. has just differed in opinion mm -hmm. in that WhatsApp group, the, he goes ahead to issue threats to him. It is very unfounded for any public officer, especially these uh, uh, state officers who have been elected, mm -hmm. to see this office as a platform to rule the people. It, they are there to serve the people. Okay. Okay, we cannot confirm that because it's your own WhatsApp. Yeah, no, so there's no, no way I'm giving it. I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving it as a personal perspective. Okay. Because I will stand to defend what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It is capable of being treated as fact that our elected le leaders, once they assume office, okay. they think that now that office is theirs. Mm -hmm. This is a public office. It is that public trust. Okay. Authority assigned it to a state officer okay. or a public officer. Okay. Well, the governor yesterday before she was impeached, she defended herself. She said uh, the investigations that are ongoing with the DCI has not linked her or her office to the death of Sniper. Uh, let's leave it at that. Let me get to introduce um, Gibson Gisore here, constitutional lawyer. Uh, Gisore, um, we started off with Naftali with the show. We were talking about some of the reactions following the uh, the uh, announcement by the Senate or the decision to uphold uh, the impeachment of uh, Kawera Mwangaza. So what did you make of the proceedings and what is likely to lie ahead for the impeached governor now? I think the victory, I think you update first. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late because of other commitments. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, the, this really is a lesson to other governors and uh, first I want to congratulate the people of Meru County that they have made a point mm -hmm. that you cannot rule them in a manner which they do not want. Mm -hmm. You cannot rule them like they are sheep which are headed in the wrong direction and they believe that you're not taking them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So uh, given the persistency of the county assembly in terms of uh, uh, pointing out the governor's uh, misdeeds of the governor, it, uh, it was incumbent upon the Senate to actually be able to find mm -hmm. that uh, indeed there is a problem because if uh, somebody keeps crying every other time and you keep uh, saying that, uh, you know, you're making jokes, then uh, at the end of the day you will find that this person is maybe dead at some point and then you cannot be able to help them. So it's, uh, I think for the, it's victory for the people of Meru for status and uh, it sends a signal to all the governors that you cannot be a power unto yourselves. Power should not be able to get into their head and then they be able to rule without the people because that is what is called lording over the people. When you want to lord over the people, mm -hmm. you better be able to lord over them with their consent. But the people of Meru feel that they need to withdraw their consent of, of, of Kawira Mwangaza being their governor. And uh, they, have acted, uh, they have acted and they have really pushed the agenda that she, she's not fit to be their leader. Mm -hmm. And that's what was demonstrated, I believe, in the Senate, by the Senate confirming the same, that indeed she has gone over and above what she's supposed to do as a constitutional office holder. Mm -hmm. So as a constitutional lawyer, what are, are likely chances if she goes to the courts? She's still, uh, it's, it's still not done. Mm -hmm. It's still not done that she's really out because it uh, depends also on what the court will find because the Senate was sitting as a quasi-judicial body mm -hmm. to determine. So it was, uh, of course, trying to, in, in a preliminary way, it was trying to look at the evidence which was produced. And according to them, they felt that uh, it, uh, it amounted to gross misconduct of the Constitution. So 
it upon court to also take its own evidence mm -hmm. and be able to listen to our case properly. Our evidence to be adduced from point A to point Z. And then once the court pronounces itself, then she still has a, a chance to, of course, go to the to, 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 to proceed till her appeal is done. Mm -hmm. And that is when now we can say that she's really done. But for now, it's a first win for for the people of Meru County, mm -hmm. but there's still another fight to be fought in the courts. Mm -hmm. But you have seen uh, the conversations we were having with Naftali as you we were walking in. We were talking about the dissolution of a county assembly. The conversation has been rife, not just in Meru County, but the country at large. So um, your reaction to that and tell us some of the procedures that the uh, county needs to follow so as to ensure if they have decided that the county assembly of Meru needs to be dissolved, what are these legal procedures they must adhere to? Uh, the dissolution, the process of dissolution of, uh, I'm not sure of the county assembly, but uh, of the county, mm -hmm. because uh, the constitution talks about the county. Yes. So I'll not the county assembly. Because if you dissolve the county assembly, then what then? The, the, the governor just starts to rule by, by him or herself. Mm -hmm. So the whole issue is dissolution. Our constitution has a provision for dissolution of our county so that uh, the president now takes over. Mm -hmm. So all structures of the county leadership should be scrapped so that the president takes over and, takes and appoints a caretaker committee okay. which should be able to run the, 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 the processes uh, till the end of the term. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I don't think we're in that context. Uh, this is purely a procedural process which is uh, still anchored in the constitution that uh, it's the governor who is the problem with the county assembly. Mm -hmm. The county assembly is merely checking the, the, the governor's uh, uh, governance procedures according to the constitution and that's why uh, they presented their case to, to they presented their case to the senate and the senate indeed found in favor of the uh, allegations which were brought forth mm -hmm. so at that at this point we cannot be able to argue in the case of the solution of anything mm -hmm. what we can only be argue is kawira mwangaza need to fight for her seat mm -hmm. because her seat is now in jeopardy so she has uh, another lifeline with the court which she needs to prove before the court that indeed whatever was alleged mm -hmm. before the Senate and which the Senate found in its wisdom that uh, she had uh, really gone overboard and, uh, and, and gone beyond the constitution uh, is not what it is. But that is her case now to, to prove. She needs to move to court and be able to appeal the decision of the Senate. Mm -hmm. And it's not the first time we are seeing this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen uh, there's a, there's a, the neighboring county of, uh, of, of Embu during the first term suffered several, uh, several, several impeachment motions which mm -hmm. were brought, of course, to the Senate and uh, uh, Wambora was able to defend them in the first term. And uh, people say he's the governor who has nine lives of a cut. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 uh, she still went ahead and served this full term mm. so some of these things are uh, maybe teething issues which uh, maybe the governor needs to be able to understand the people where they're coming from and then have a sit down with the people and be able to decide the way forward mm -hmm. because really leadership is inclusive leadership is something which you have to work with the people it's not something which you decide to move whichever direction you want to move and you want the people to follow you. And uh, there seems to be a problem. One thing I think we need to also note, Abdi, is that uh, mm -hmm. the county assembly of Meru is one county assembly which has one of the most learned mm -hmm. uh, MCAs. So I think there's a, there's a variance. There's a variance between the, 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 the exposure. Mm -hmm. The exposure of the county assembly vis-a-vis -vis the, the governor. I think there should be a problem there. There should be a problem where they, they are not able to meet in terms of intellectual capacity at some point. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that is what is uh, leading to what uh, the challenges we are facing right now in my own perspective. But I, I could be wrong. I don't come from Meru. <laughs> but that is something which we needs to be looked at so that uh, at, at the end of the day we get to find where the solution has got to be found with the people of Meru and it's only the people of Meru can solve this challenge. Mm -hmm. The other question that uh, Meru residents want to know now, will there be a vacuum? After the impeachment, there, there, there is uh, there is no provision for a vacuum in the in the in the county leadership. 
if uh, she successfully impeached uh, for the rest of the term will be carried over by the deputy uh, by the deputy governor mm -hmm. who is in place yeah. we have seen this happen with nairobi yes. and uh, and and of course the the, the, the lady who was there proceeded to 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 finish the term of song mm -hmm. uh, albeit the the other provision where they brought in uh, they brought in uh, the, nairobi the, the nairobi metropolitan mm -hmm. to uh, take over and run the county Mm -hmm. But she was still serving as governor. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Naftali, coming back to you, this is the third time she is coming before the Senate. What do you think was the defining moment that um, the senators decided, oh, this third time now she has to go, as opposed to the two instances that she was before the senators? Yeah. In, in mm -hmm. fact, now before that, uh, for for this interview to to show lack of favoritism, mm -hmm. or for us to have. Um, uh, to be free from uh, undue bias or preconceived opinions, mm -hmm. it, it is highly recommended that we discuss also other avenues. Was mm -hmm. the counter simply also ha ha having some mayhem mm -hmm. in this uh, in this impeachment issue? Because most Kenyans, most Kenyans view Kagura Mwangaza as the main problem in this. Uh, uh, impe 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 impeachment, but some mm -hmm. it is true that some think that the counter assembly has mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. and if indeed the counter assembly has a misconduct, mm -hmm. the MCS, then let us uh, imagine where the situation we can suspend this counter assembly mm -hmm. and uh, re look at now Article 192 of the Constitution, which contemplates suspension of a counter government. In fact, it's, it's not the Dissolution. Mm -hmm. When you dissolve, it's, it's like you terminate it. Mm -hmm. the, the constitution has, has not provided for dissolution. It has provided for suspension. It means that mm -hmm. this county unit cannot be terminated uh, 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 completely. Okay. It is just a suspension for a period of time. Okay. Okay. Just a minute. I will continue with the conversation. Um, um, if you want to join in the conversation, talk to us on our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 and at Abdiaziz Ashim 1. Quickly, I want to take you to um, a third Nairobi caucus on uh, the countering of the financing of terrorism a conference that is currently happening. Let's listen in to what is happening to that particular um, event that has uh, brought together participants and key policy stakeholders. You can see on your screen that is the President's advice Advisor on matters of security, Ambassador Monica Juma. Let's listen in. Work, work is really to monitor and to enhance those collaborations, and I'm sure they can speak to the detail of that. Uh, thank you, Aziri. Uh, can help you to. to Uh, I think we have uh, uh, moved uh, from, uh, the challenges, that, uh, particularly uh, in the in the last decade, Kenyans would prevent attacks and the many many attacks that we we had uh, targeting our public and uh, a lot of and challenges. Uh, we have we have not had uh, any major incidents for for a while, and it is it is to to, to a great part and and the partnerships that we are having with uh, with uh, uh, the public uh, the Kenyan public is increasingly more aware of this threat and how it is, mm. and 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 that has significantly contributed. We apologize uh, for that technical hiccup. It is a conference that is currently happening. Uh, that is the Nairobi caucus on countering the financing of uh, terrorism in the country. Key stakeholders, especially in the security sector, are there. And you've just seen the president's uh, national security advisor, that is Monica Juma, addressing members of the fourth estate. Now, as we enter the final leg of our conversation, we were talking about uh, Meru uh, Governor Kawera Mwangaza's fate. Now, given that she has 
has lost uh, um, her seat. Uh, we are talking to uh, Naftali once more. Nyamogo, a certified professional mediator, if you're just joining us. And we also have Gibson Gisore, a constitutional lawyer. Gentlemen, let's enter the final uh, the conversation that we're in right now. Uh, Naftali, you are making a point in terms of why the third time for the county assembly was a charm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, uh, and I, I was uh, thinking that we also look at the aspect of the county assembly, the MCS. Mm -hmm. Because some Kenyans are arguing that these MCS are, 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 are behaving like minors. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the, the, the allegations from the MCS, mm -hmm. people, some other Kenyans, and we needed to give them what? Air, 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 air time. Mm -hmm. In their thinking, they are not convinced that the MCS are fit. Mm -hmm. So if this is the case then, what does the constitution envisage on suspension? Mm -hmm. Because if a counter assembly is suspended, then this MCS will be sus suspended. Mm -hmm. So a counter, as, uh, a counter government cannot be suspended under mm -hmm. Article 192, mm -hmm. except there is an emergency arising out uh, from an internal conflict or war. Mm -hmm. We don't see any war in the mirror. If there were Mm -hmm. If there were a war, mm -hmm. then the county government could be suspended okay. or exceptional circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I, I may think that the, the, these unruly or uh, 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 unprecedented, uh, I, I mean, lack of competence mm -hmm. from the MCS okay. may, may, in my own opi opinion, mm -hmm. be regarded as exceptional circumstances. Okay. So the president then should uh, form a commission of inquiry. Okay. Then once that commission of inquiry has come up with their, uh, their, 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 their investigations, if the president is convinced then these investigations will be subjected again to the Senate. Okay. Then the speak of the Senate after that process now will declare the county government suspended but it will be suspended for a period of 30 uh, I, I mean uh, for a period of 90 days mm -hmm. then after which an election now should be carried out in the Meru county okay yes yeah, sorry in your final comment especially on why uh, this third time was a charm for the county assembly i think really the 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 the, the spanner was thrown into the works when we the, the whole event came back to the Senate, mm -hmm. you know. She was lucky twice. You can never be lucky so many times, especially when you're dealing with the, with the public. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I guess uh, the, the, the allegations, you look at the allegations, uh, they were, you know, even the county assembly has also become wiser in terms of crafting because I, I watched the previous one and the, all the, I think there were seven, uh, seven allegations. All of them were, all of them were thrown away for, uh, for lack of uh, uh, clear evidence. And mm -hmm. I think this time they really crafted the evidence well. They really made their motions uh, and the, the people who are to be their witnesses to be, to be people who understand what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So when that is presented before the Senate, then the Senate does not have an option mm -hmm. of also, again, uh, going ahead and saying that, you know, there is nothing here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really think that there is an underlying, there's an underlying problem in Meru, mm -hmm. and the underlying problem is that the governor cannot be able to listen to the people, cannot okay. be able to go with the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you realize that, it's very difficult for you to actually send back the same governor to the same people okay. who have claim that this person is unfit to serve us. Okay, thank you so much. That is uh, Gibson Gisore, a constitutional lawyer. Naftali Nyamogo, a certified professional mediator. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I know it was brief. This is a conversation that will continue in the coming days, and we are waiting to see what will happen if the governor decides uh, to appeal this particular decision at uh, the corridors of uh, justice. Once uh, she does, of course, we'll brief you in our subsequent uh, bulletins. Uh, now, before I take this short commercial break, in the second hour, we'll be discussing the possible returns of uh, 49 provisions within the withdrawal of the finance bill of 2024 and among them is the contentious echo levy and we'll be discussing this conversation with none other than uh, Dennis Wakaba a secretary of Electric Mobility Association of Kenya who will be joining us after this short commercial break don't go too far <laughs>